Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to Ram Overload. Today I'm going to be talking about 10 AI tools that are actually pretty cool and useful. All right, so these 10 uh, have been on my list for a while and I do think they provide a real world value to it other than some other AI tools that are just somewhat gimmicks. So let's get started with the list. The first one is called Runway. All right, it's an AI created. It has a created suite. It's like uh, similar to like an Adobe competitor. You can take any text image video to generate a new video uh, so basically it'll create videos for you based off text or anything like that right it's pretty cool uh, once you guys use it you know a, a lot of these ai things have people have been starting to use it especially on social media whether it be tiktok or uh, instagram or anything like that so just to make co uh, content and uh, just to like mess around with it and see what people can do with it. So you guys can see here on the left, generate video, generate images, um, expand images, right? So things that aren't there, it'll use AI to kind of, you know, guess what should be around this image, which is pretty cool because, you know, if you just have a cropped image of something or if you have an image and you want to expand it to uh, something bigger, you can use this tool to base, basically make it bigger than what it originally was. All right. Um, so the pricing over here, they do have a free tier, which is free forever. You have 125 credits and can't buy more credits. So it's just basically uh, whatever you have. Um, you can only use it for that okay and then obviously the next plans uh 12 a month which is pretty reasonable in my opinion you know especially for a user you know it's something affordable that you know you don't have to be a big business to be able to use it whether you're a small startup a single person you know just influencer or just something you want to uh just mess around with i do think that the free tier and the standard tier are pretty good in my opinion all right, so the next one we will talk about is called Versi. So Versi is transforms text into virtual experiences. So that's basically what it is, as it says. So let's play this video and you guys can see over here. So this is like a 3D uh, virtual experience. And you, if you want to add something, you basically just write some text, you know, over here saying it at an event room with chairs and stuff. So it takes some time and just adds it to wherever you're looking, um, wherever you, the camera image is. So yeah, that's pretty cool in my opinion. Um, there, I don't think there's anything like that and it's definitely useful if it is actually like a 3D thing, you know, maybe you want to generate games with it, you know, it can be for that, it can be, uh, I, I don't know if it's available for game development yet, but it's just, I'm thinking in the future, you know, that possibly could be how, you know, games are developed, you know, rather than doing the image renderations yourself, you know, creating them on CAD or Blender, some 3D images, you can just say what you want and it'll automatically create it. Um, so like over here, not only 3D and create interactive experiences of any kind from product configura configuration and events to escape rooms, leaderboard, treasure hunts, and more. So it does seem like it's going to be somewhat game oriented. And, you know, it's really interesting. I'm really looking forward to this and seeing how they um, build it up. Next is Kyber. So Kyber, you've probably seen this somewhere on social media that where people have used it and maybe you haven't noticed. But it's basically you upload your own image or song and using text, it'll create a video. All right. So let's just go through it and see. So I want to create a video of and then you put your subject there and it'll create a video of that. All right. Transform, change the way your um, video with just a few clicks, the looks of it. Storyboard, gallery. Let's go to the pricing. So pricing plan, they five dollars a month, which is really good, you know, really cheap. And then pro ten dollars a month. Um, they do all have this sort of credits things because when you do when you generate AI, it does use a lot of computer resources, and you do want to limit how much people use. You know, people are paying five dollars a month, but that doesn't mean they can just create a million different. Uh, things they want to create because each time they create something it does affect um, well it does cost a company to make something okay um, so yeah so this is pretty cool check them out as well 
Next one will, is called Sound Raw. It's basically what it sounds like. You know, Sound Raw obviously is for music, right? Or sounds or something similar to that. And it's basically you can create royalty free music for content. Okay, so if you need music, if you are a content creator, especially like YouTube or something, royalty free music is definitely something you always need, right? And this definitely will help you. In my opinion, they do have a great tier, which is uh, free to generate songs. And if you like it and actually want to use it, then you upgrade it. So you don't have to be paying off uh, from the beginning without even uh, with the risk of not liking it. OK, so, yeah, you can start off creating the content. You like it. OK, you want to use it, then you got to pay, which, you know, is understandable, in my opinion. You also have a personal as well as commercial use license when you pay the monthly fee. All right. Uh, moving on is Microsoft 365 Copilot. So if you do still use Microsoft Word, Office, right? Um, I know a lot of people have migrated to like Google Docs, but Microsoft 365 is still used heavily, um, especially in like corporate worlds. So Microsoft 365 Copilot is basically their AI version. They're going to just implement into their uh, Office applications, right? Um, if you are a developer, you probably know about GitHub Copilot, which is also developed by Microsoft, right? So you can see over here, um, you know, create content with it, and then you just put whatever you want, and then it just generates what basically it thinks you want, right? You describe what you want, and it'll generate what it what you, it thinks you want. So the Office, as well as for Excel, I think they will imp implement it in most, if not all, of the Office suites, all right? So here you can make it analyze data for you and do different things. So it's just really cool, especially, um, you know, you're working with spreadsheets and things like that. You can even implement it into your email, right? Creating drafts for sp uh, specific topics or specific people. So yeah, it's really cool. This, I don't think it's out yet, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on and try out once it comes out. All right, so this is just another uh, 365 demo where it just shows, well, I guess blog, where it's just showing how it's used. All right, next is the NVIDIA Canvas. The NVIDIA Canvas is still in this beta phase right now, right? So you guys can, you guys can download the beta phase, right? And it turns painted stuff into real pictures, okay? So you've probably used paint right when you were little maybe or some kind of software where you're painting on the computer and it always it never looks real right but this software will make it look actually realistic so you guys can see over here on the left the person's just drawing some clouds and on the right side the image the clouds are being generated in a real lifelike image all right same thing here where you guys can see the image on the right is being um, generated based off whatever the left image is. All right, and you, there are a lot of uh, different, I don't know, uh, palette you can say in, in this where you can see like over here, it's a desert, it's like near the water and different styles, I guess. And not only that, you can also import these images to Adobe or even Blender if you have like 360. So it's really cool to create maybe like worlds, you know, uh, game worlds or even 3D renderings of different things. So it does import, it allows for 3D um, applications. So yeah, that's pretty cool as well. And I do think this will probably use for gaming as well. Um, I just looking and hoping that they will really improve on this and it will actually be used. All right, moving on is the chat DID. All right, so this is basically a chat application where you're talking face to face with chat GPT. All right, so you it is kind of creepy in, in my opinion, but you know, it, it allows you to- Chat.DID lets you- Pause that. So you guys can see over here, this you're basically talking to them face to face and you're not, you're not texting it, it's, it's, you're actually using your voice and it's listening and it'll reply based off what you're saying. So it's, it is give you kind of like a creepy feel because you're talking to someone that's not real, but they sound real. Um, yeah, so just kind of uh, check, cool to check out. And they have an ethics page as well, definitely 
check that out this image over here it's really weird I don't know why they <laughs> they're moving like that but okay let's move on next one is called Wisdolia so Wisdolia auto generates flashcards based off what is on the website so if you're on a website this is mostly I think would be useful for studying right um, you know you have a whole essay on something and you really want to study it rather than creating your flashcards manually this will automatically fl create flashcards based off the information that's on the website so else you can also like th there'll be questions and then you can press the button to get the answer all right and not only that they, it's also for YouTube videos as well so that's pretty cool especially if you're watching a really long video and you want to know if you retain the knowledge and actually learn something from it um, yeah definitely cool to check out all right now moving on next one is called Mixo so Mixo is basically a no code website generator so you can create websites with no coding experience all you need to do is give a brief description of what you want all right so you say i want a website that does that has this uh, a, a navigation bar on the right that's it, all the websites are, are responsive so you don't have to worry about that you can like navigation on the right i want header on the top some a, a wait list text box so it's different things and it's it's pretty cool on what it can generate oops it just stopped working but yeah, it's pretty cool what it can generate, and I do think people will start to use it. I do think it's a little basic right now, but once it, they start building up on it, it will be, uh, in my opinion, one of the top choices for no-code uh, solutions out there. Lastly, I want to talk about an applica a, a tool called Rewind. This is only available on Mac currently, and so if you're a, user, a Windows user, um, unfortunately, you won't have access to this. It's really cool in theory, but it is a bit creepy. Okay, so it records everything you've said or you've seen or you've searched on your Mac and it all becomes searchable. All right, so if you're, you know, just studying, doing different research, you're talking and it's, you're going to different websites, you're going to different, you're searching a bunch of different things, it will basically all be recorded and searchable so if you want to go you know maybe a week later or the next day all right what was i doing what, what was that website i went on what what was i talking about you can basically just search it and find it and everything will be available so you know it is creepy but they do say that none of that information is stored on any cloud it's not stored anywhere other than your own computer all right so you can so no cloud integration or IT required. So nothing's that. Everything is stored on your computer locally, right? So for privacy reasons, uh, you know, a, a lot of people won't trust it if it's stored in the cloud. Just, you know, if your personal information, if you're allowing this onto your computer. And the last thing you want to do is have your personal information stored somewhere else on someone else's computer. So, yeah, we they do store it locally. Uh, so you kind of have an ease of that. And then also, you can exclude certain sites. So it's not like um, it will include everything you do. So you can you can exclude specific apps and private browsing. You can set basically what you want to exclude. So you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my top ten list of AI tools out there that you guys should um, check out or you know stay in touch with. Uh, if you have any other AI tools that you would like me to try out and recommend, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to check out a, you know, all these new AI tools out there. It just seems like there's like an endless amount of them. But yeah, other than that, make sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.